So this is something, again, that I think people misconstrue is when you're coming back to Earth in part particular, you get lots of heat and lots of, you know, fire and flames coming out. And it actually all has to do with losing some of that delta V. Yes, so we've talked about delta V speeding you up to get somewhere, but when you get somewhere and you want to land, you gotta you're going to fire just as much rocket to slow yourself down. You have to go from nine kilometers per second to zero kilometers per second. So, I mean, if you want to land on Earth by rocket landing, so you fire your retro rockets and come yep. down to a nice soft landing, it's going to need another 9.2 kilometers per second. The same for landing on the moon, which is from 100 kilometers, yeah. you need 1.7 kilometers a second to land on the moon, and again to take off again to come back, and to land on Mars or to land on anything. So that would mean then you would need all of that fuel to fire that rocket engines to create enough delta V just the other way. And that's going to be really hard because that means you saw how big the rocket was at takeoff. You have to then carry double that, but also much more than double that. Because, because if you're going to carry all that fuel that's needed to slow yourself down, you're going to need a rocket that's exponentially 20 times bigger than that yep. to carry that up. Because your dry mass is increased, so that means we need more wet mass and it becomes a never ending problem. So basically, it's going to be really hard to land on anything if you want it to be a gentle landing, as opposed to plow into the ground at seven and a half kilometers a second. But there is a way you can cheat. Okay. Thank goodness, otherwise getting into space would be impossible, but coming back would be utterly impossible. <laughs> and the way you can cheat is to use the fact that at least some planets, oh, well, one, way to, one way to cheat yeah. is actually to not slow down. Okay, so you just essentially say, eh, that's it. Yeah, now this is not going to be an option for landing on the Earth, but let's say- Or you're probably sending most people anywhere. But let's say, for example, you wanted to look at Pluto. Yep. What you could do is, I mean, it's going to take a lot of delta V to get to Pluto. Yep. And to slow down enough to go into orbit or land on it, it would take an incredible amount yeah. more delta V. That's right. Which is just basically not possible with current rocket technology. That's right. So the New Horizons mission decided we can't do that. All we can do is just fly past at high speed and snap a few shots as we go past. And that's what they did. And that's what they did. And it has just kept going out. They had a little bit of fuel on board to do just an ever so slight nudge just to go, nudge this, to, this go to another object. One. That's right. So this is one technique you can use. What they basically did was as they whipped past at some enormous speed, taking photos like crazy. <laughs> they couldn't download them all. So what they had to do is store them all on the memory on the... That's right. And then and slowly, slowly over the next year or two, download them all back to the Earth. Yep. Um, so this is one option. This also, for example, was done back in the 1980s when Halley's Comet last went mm. past. Um, the European Space Agency and the Giotto space probe passed. The delta V to get to a comet is horrific yeah. uh, because of the orbits comets are in. Um, and so again, it just shot past, took a few shots, um, which might have been a good idea in this case because comets have lots of dust around them yep. and they can destroy things. Um, so this is one option, you just don't slow down. But assuming we want to slow down in particular like for land, land on Mars Earth. or come back to Earth, yeah, yeah. We, I want to survive it. So I, can, <laughs> I don't think they would like it if we just slammed to the Earth every yeah. time. I mean, Elon Musk said he wanted to die on Mars but not on impact. <laughs> That's right. So. Uh, what we can use is this really little thing called atmospheres. Yes. So the idea would be that instead of slowing down by firing rockets in reverse, which is just going to murder your delta V, maybe you dip into the atmosphere and use atmospheric drag to slow you uh, down. Oh, okay. And indeed, this is how this is the uh, Crew Dragon spacecraft, and it's designed to plunge into the atmosphere. So you're going with your delta V of nine or nine and a half kilometers per second plowing down into the Earth's atmosphere. And because you're traveling so fast, you're creating a huge amount of friction due to the Earth's atmosphere. And the friction is good because it's slowing you down. That's right. So you're slowing yourself down without using rocket fuel. Exactly. You use a little bit of rocket fuel to change your trajectory so you plow into the atmosphere. But then most of the slowing down is the Earth doing it for free. That's right. But the trouble is it gets incredibly hot. Yep. So you either need something like the, uh, uh, you need, uh, in this case, they have an ablative coating, yes. which is both a very good insulator so the heat doesn't get through and melt your astronauts. And also it slowly boils away as it goes yep. and carries away the latent heat of vaporization, which is a large amount of heat and therefore allows you to survive the landing. That's right. Which is a good thing to do. 
Um, they're talking about the uh, Starship, Starship, which at, at the time of filming this has not yet flown, but yep. it's due to fly sometime in the next two months. Really honest, That's, pinky promise. Yes, it's imminent. Um, and this one is not using an additive coating because they want to be able to turn it around and launch it again the next day. And if you have to take the entire coating off and put it back on again, it's not going to work. That's right. Um, so this is actually going to use a combination of stainless steel construction and special tiles on the side and to the, be heat resistant. And the space shuttle had tiles as well because they did a similar thing and that's coming Don't practice in. practice so many of them fell off each time. Yes. And the space shuttle used every tile was customized its for a shape on the curved surface. <laughs> Whereas this one, they're just using a standard tile everywhere, so it's That's a much right. more straightforward shape, which will save them a huge amount of maintenance. They don't have to have tower number 4792, which is the only one that can fit in the spot. And that was actually one of the downfalls of the space shuttles that just didn't make it practical to relaunch quickly or cheaply. That's right. So hopefully this, this is one good way to slow down. But you can also use it when you go to Mars. Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere. It's but it still 1%. has an atmosphere, right? Yep. And so sp space probes can plunge through this. Now, most space probes that go to Mars are not designed with massive heat shields like they're on Earth. That's right. You can do that, and some missions have, where they just plow in like the Earth's atmosphere. The trouble is Mars' atmosphere expands and contracts quite a lot depending on the solar cycle, how active the sun is, because that puffs up the outer part. That's right. And you can easily get it wrong and plunge too deep or too shallow. You have to measure as it's on its way exactly where you want to go. Yep. And at least one space probe went horribly wrong when someone failed to convert units and from metric to Imperial and plunge at the wrong height into the atmosphere and burnt up. And learned that what happens when that goes wrong. But things like this is the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. This wanted to go into orbit around Mars That's right. to take photos of Mars. And that means a huge delta V to slow yourself down enough. And match that speed as we showed earlier. Yep. Because Mars is coming up behind it. So what they actually did was they fired rockets somewhat to bring it into a highly elliptical orbit around Mars. Yep. But that didn't take as much energy as going into a nice close circular orbit. And then each time it came close to Mars, it would dip through the atmosphere. So, this, so essentially they just trim a little bit every time and more and more and this and is an more. example of them trimming it and because they only go through the very outer parts their rather fragile looking spacecraft is not torn to pieces by the aero braking yep. you wouldn't want to plunge this into the earth's atmosphere no. so this can be done and it saves you a lot of delta v when trying to land on things with atmospheres mm. so your worst nightmare would be a planet with not much atmosphere and heavy gravity which luckily doesn't happen but the moon doesn't have an atmosphere so or yes. essentially none, but luckily it doesn't have a lot of gravity either. That's right. So this is going to be a big help.